You're listening to the Smarter Moms Online Podcast, episode number three. Welcome to the Smarter Moms Online Podcast, where you learn how to increase your revenue and your reputation in your online business. I'm your host, Ashlyn Tengon, and if you're ready to work smarter and not harder, then let's get started. Welcome back to the show. It's great to be back with you again today. In just a minute, you're going to hear Belle's story about how she got started on Poshmark, including how she's making about $8,000 a month on the app. I know. And she doesn't hold anything back. She's sharing exactly what she does to generate those types of sales. It's so good. Belle is a mother of two, a homeschool teacher, and a woman of faith. You'll love how real she is and how she genuinely wants to help others succeed as well. So without further ado, let's get into this amazing conversation with Belle. Alrighty, so we have Belle on the show. And Belle, welcome to the Thank podcast. You. Um, you have a lot of really exciting information that I really can't wait to hear. And before we dig into your story, um, would you mind sharing a little about you, your family, and what you're doing on Poshmark? Sure. Hi, and thank you for having me. It's a privilege to be here with you. Um, Well, my name is Belle. I am a homeschool mom. I'm also a homemaker, so there's a, a lot of things going around or going on in my life. Um, I have two kids. I have a 13-year-old a and also a four-year-old. Um, my husband, he has his own company. He is a contractor. So I also help him with his invoicing and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the Lord. So I, I do try to to gear my Poshmark. And um, I've heard, um, what is his name? I'm sorry, I forget his name. Um, the guy from Poshmark. Um, see, I'm not even sure how to properly pronounce his name. Um, John, uh, you're talking about the CEO, right? Yes. Uh huh. I want to um, say Manish. Ma- Ma- Manish, right? Yes. So horrible for not knowing how to pronounce his name. <laughs> but Manish, um, he um, he mentioned in one of his interviews how you have to own it. You know, you have to be yourself. And for me, being myself is is showing everybody my love for the Lord, for God. So for me, I really like to incorporate that into what I do. Um, so anything I do, I try to do it as to as unto the Lord. Um, but that's, that's me. I love the Lord. I have my family, my two kids, my husband. I also have a poodle. Oh. So that's been interesting. <laughs> yeah. What is your poodle's name? Her name is Masha. How She's cute. Crazy. How <laughs> She's cute. crazy. I love that you you're owning who you are and I was browsing your posh closet and your Instagram and I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to respond to your comments on Instagram I was preparing for this interview (laughs) it's okay I love that yes you are you like those bible verses and those are very inspiring to me too so i'm so glad mm-hmm. that you're not ashamed to put it out there because some people are afraid to yeah. show their faith because they're afraid of other religions opposing it but i mm-hmm. love that you're grasping that keep mm-hmm. going with that i love it thank you praise god for that <laughs> yes so why did you start selling on poshmark and when did you start um it's a funny story uh i think it was back in april of 05 i'm sorry 2015 2015 Mm -hmm. um i i started with instagram i was couponing trying to you know help my family save a little bit of money um then i found a group of friends who (laughs) who taught me how to find penny items at nordstrom rack um, so then I started accumulating so many penny items and they're designer brand stuff, you know, back in the day, there was a lot of them nowadays. I don't think there's, there's hardly any, but, um, yeah, so I would do that. And then I, there were sizes that didn't fit me, you know, shoes that were maybe eight or size nine. 
I'm a size seven, so it didn't work for me. So I, I got Poshmark. Um, one of my friends told me about it. So I started putting my stuff up there. And little by little, they started selling. And then there was a time also where my husband got injured at work. Um, and he was on um, uh, disability. So mm-hmm. then to help out, I, I saw that I had clothes in my closet I didn't use anymore. So I started to take pictures of them, upload them here and there, and they started selling. I didn't make a lot of money or anything in the beginning. It was just kind of like, you know, a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. So that's how, I, that's how it all began. <laughs> I love it. Is Poshmark the only platform you sell on? It is not. I also use um, Mercari. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, I've done Amazon and eBay. Um, but I am going uh, full on with, Am- uh, I'm sorry, with Poshmark right now because it's, it, for me, eBay and Amazon is too complicated. I'm not really liking the, I feel stressed out <laughs> when I deal with those two platforms. Oh. Um, and Mercari too. I feel like Mercari, there's a lot of um, listing because I, right now I specialize in boutique items I have like 12 of one item so I have to go in there and you know upload every single size and it's too much work for me at the moment so I like the simpleness of just sharing your item on Poshmark and that's it yeah that's true so you were talking about you have to list every single item on Mercari Uh uh-huh yeah because they don't have the they don't have the option of you know uploading different sizes on one listing Mm -hmm. so I have to upload every single one separately so that is true yeah that is hard true. thank goodness Poshmark allows us to upload different sizes mm-hmm. <laughs> in yep. one listing one listing so do you remember what your first sale was I do it was um some Steve Madden uh sandals <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> were they yours previously owned or did you buy it from a retail store I bought them from Nordstrom Rec for a penny. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and how much yeah. did you sell for? I, I don't remember. I want to say 20. Wow. Around there, That's maybe. A really good profit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, um, was it shortly after you started selling on Poshmark that you made that sale or did it take a while? You know what? No, I think it was shortly after I started, maybe within that same week. That is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you find that you had to share that item over and over again, or did you not know about sharing your items often? Girl, I did not know about (laughs) sharing at all. So (laughs) it it sold. (laughs) That's so great. It just sold by itself. You just throw something up there, and you're like, "Oh, (laughs) it's sold." (laughs) That is amazing. (laughs) Yeah. So, if you don't mind sharing. Um, I'd like to ask you, because I'm sure a lot of people would want to know, mm-hmm. on average, um, how many sales do you make a week or a month? Or would you mind sharing some of your statistics that you have? We'd love to hear that. Yeah, not at all. Um, well, I've been kind of trying to, to post on Instagram my, my weekly or, you know, your eight, nine, ten days um, stat. Mm-hmm. I've seen it's anywhere from 100 to 150 a week. Wow. Mm-hmm. And are those all shoes? Yes. The majority, I would say 99.9% of my items are shoes. And they're all boutique items. That is amazing. Mm-hmm. It's been really good. You, so you sell between 100 to 150 items a week. Mm-hmm. That is amazing. How do you do that? Um, well, now, now that I know about the sharing power, um, because I, before I didn't know that, even back two years ago, I, um, I used to buy shoes, mm-hmm. but I didn't know about sharing. So I would just upload them and thank God they would sell, probably make $1,000 a month for my shoe sales. Um, but I would never share my stuff. I didn't know about that. I would share maybe other people's items, every, you know, every now and then. But I would just up, upload my things, leave them there, walk away, upload something new. Um, but now that I know about sharing, which I think I learned this back in, in March, this, this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so I share, you know, I try to keep my shares, my self shares at uh, above 25,000 um, 
uh, within the last 30 days. Right. And it just, it just really helps to, to share your own items. That's really amazing. And I find it interesting that you say you keep it above 25,000 because I have seen some statistics that people have said, as long as your shares are above 80,000 within the past 30 days, then you'll start to see momentum. But Mm -hmm. you're saying something completely opposite. Can you elaborate more on that? You know, well, I, I think it has a lot to do. It, it, there's different aspects to making sales. Um, one of them, of course, is sharing your own items because when you're sharing, you, you know, you're letting the app know that you're being active. You know, you're interested in making sales and sell and promoting yourself. Basically, you're, you're promoting yourself within the app mm-hmm. when you're sharing your items. Um, but it doesn't really help to share, share, share your own stuff if you don't have quality pictures maybe, or if it's, if they're just really dark um, or little things like that, you know, I mean, it's going to help, but it's not going to give you that full potential that it, it could have. Um, but I mean, I, I've never shared 80,000 within 30 days, to be honest. I think the highest, I, I think right now I'm at, what is it? Um, do you want to my numbers? I'm at 38,000 right now nice. for the last 30 days. So, and so sometimes before I wouldn't share so much within the 30 days and I would still make sales when I, back in, maybe I want to say May, I wasn't sharing this much and I would still get consistent sales. I think it just has a lot, a little bit to do with everything, you know, with your, your pricing, with how much you share your item, with the lighting, maybe the description that you have also. So if you have really bad pictures, even if you share 80,000 or 100,000 within 30 days, you're probably not going to get as many sales. I agree with you 100% on that. Totally. Mm -hmm. Uh, You mentioned you weren't sharing as much back in May. Do you have Mm -hmm. an idea or do you remember how often you were sharing back then? I do not remember and I do not know. Um, I don't know. No, nope. not hardly anything because I wasn't. Uh, um, I had just, I think I started with my sharing March. Uh, I want to say in, at the end of March, that's when I've started to, you know, share my items more. Mm-hmm. Um, but I wasn't sharing too, many, too much, you know, as of now, I'm like constantly sharing in my closet. So do you notice an increase in sales now that you're sharing more often than you, than you did just a few months ago? Oh, yes, definitely. How, how much of an increase are you seeing? Well, when I, when I got my boutique items back in March, um, because it took, like, I uploaded them towards the end of March, and then maybe April, you know, started sharing, uploading one, two, three items. By the end of April, beginning of, of May, I was already taking out money from my Posh account to my bank account. So I was probably doing 1000 a month. Mm-hmm. Um, now, by God's grace, I'm making about 8000 And that's not all profit. That's, that's, you know, also with my investment in there. Right. But um, it's a big jump from 1000 to 8000 to that's, your bank. That is huge. That's a huge jump. Yes. And to think that you went from, you made that big of an increase in just a couple of months just by sharing your own listings. Mm-hmm. And of course a bunch of other things that you mentioned coming along with that, you know, your photos definitely make a huge impact as well. Mm -hmm. Girl. Yeah. I am, I am in shock right now. (laughs) (laughs) That is. Tell me about it. (laughs) No, you must be in shock too. Just, I, I mean, I can just imagine that you're just amazed by what this has done for your family. Yeah, definitely. I really, I, you know, I'm like on the, I don't know. It's like a thin line. I'm amazed and shocked at the same time that I am not surprised because I know that, for example, in in the Bible, the Lord says that he will prosper you if you seek him first. Everything else will be added on to you. You know, so for me, in a sense, it's like, why am I amazed at what you're doing, Lord? It's like, it's, it's, I mean, you provide for your people, you know, it's, it's, and I know, like I always say on my Instagram, I know there will also be a day where I have zero sales. Maybe my business comes down and, and I'll be fine with it. I, I just have to ask the Lord to give me that contentment when that moment comes, you know? Is that 
is that the phrase that you or the verse that you constantly turn to or do you have a specific verse that you're always turning to i think the one that i'm always turning to i do not want to quote the the verse of it's somewhere in job in the okay. book of job it's um the lord gives and the lord takes blessed be the name of the lord oh i love that yeah i love that one of my favorites is i don't know i don't i just know the verse i don't know where it's from but and i'm probably going to butcher this but it's mm-hmm. trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will lead you in the right path. I think that's how it goes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite verse to lean on to. Okay. I so did a very good verse. Yeah, thanks. So do you feel that there was a specific turning point in your business besides sharing your listings? Was there anything else? And there's no, you don't, there's no right or wrong answer. Just do you feel there was a turning point? You know, I I do feel that um, not only do I try to take better pictures, but because I have boutique items, um, there has to be at least one shoe in that box that's going to fit me. Yes. (laughs) So I keep a shoe for myself and I model it myself. Um, I model my own shoes. I take my own pictures. I do see that once I, I, for example, there is shoes that I have listed. I don't model. I don't have my size. So I just take pictures and upload them. Mm-hmm. They don't sell quite as well or as fast as the ones that I have modeled. Although I did see um, somebody post on Facebook last night um, talking about how if you're going to, how they don't like to see what, some comments were in this post saying how they don't like to see feet and shoes, just don't even model them, just take pictures of them. And I mean, to, you know, whatever your preference is. But for me, in my case, I like to model my shoes and I see that that helps myself. So, um, you know, of course, get the pedicure done, <laughs> make yeah. them look nice. <laughs> and I have to agree. I do like to see the shoe modeled on a real foot. Because mm-hmm. it gives me a better idea of what it's going to look like on my foot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a lot of times, um, I know companies, they, they put in their hard work, you know, to get their stock photos and everything. First of all, they're not allowed on Poshmark unless you have permission from the, from the vendors. Right. But um, it's, you never, I mean, I'm exactly like you. When I'm shopping, where, even if it's on Sears.com, wherever it is, mm-hmm. I don't really trust the pictures that I see. So. If I were to be on Poshmark and I see somebody that has the same shoe and somebody has the stock photo and somebody else has the, um, they're modeling the shoe themselves, I would probably go for the one who's modeling themselves because it just looks more real. It just looks more a normal person, not a model, you know, in a studio. Totally. Yes, I agree 100%. (laughs) Is Is there a process you use to take your pictures, I, I saw your pictures on Poshmark and they look really good. So is there, how do you take your own pictures? Because it looks like <laughs> somebody else is taking those photos. <laughs> That's a funny, that's a funny question. <laughs> or better, yeah, a funny answer. Um, well, I, on my Poshmark, most of the pictures that you will see, it's either myself or my daughter. I have her model some shoes for me, my 13 year old. Oh. Um, so some of them, it's not many. It's my daughter modeling. So I'm just taking, you know, snapping the pictures. Mm-hmm. There's other ones of me outside where I take my, because I have very bad lighting in my apartment. It's very, very bad. So I go outside um, and I just put the shoe on and I am just bend over and take my picture. <laughs> very, very simple. <laughs> <laughs> very simple <laughs> that's what I was imagining but I was like no I wonder if there's another way because I would imagine my photos would not come out looking as good as yours <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that's that's my outside because I don't want to carry my 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 tripod and my professional camera well I don't have it's, it's a canon mm-hmm. I don't want to take those outside because I do it quick there's people walking around so I'm like they're always staring at me like what is this lady doing taking pictures of her shoes you know, so I just go put the shoes on. I put them on outside actually. And then, you know, I grab my phone and I love my phone. My phone takes really, 
really good quality pictures. So you don't even need a professional camera, to be honest. Um, most of my pictures are with my phone. And I just, yeah, bend over, take them. And then also I have some indoors where, I don't know if you've seen, I have my, um, my hardwood floor. Yes. It's like a gray flooring that I got from Home Depot. That one, I have a tripod, so I put my Canon on there. Mm -hmm. I have my light set up, and my phone and my camera are connected. Um, well, there's this app. So then I'm standing there, and I'm looking down at my phone, and when I position myself to however I want the shoe to look, I press my phone, and it takes the picture from my, from my tripod, my camera across from me. That's really cool. So that's the other way. What app is that, if you don't mind sharing? Well, it's the Canon because uh, my camera is a Canon. I, don't, I forgot what it is. Oh, so there's an app that comes with the camera? Yes, there's an app that comes with the camera that you can connect with Wi-Fi. And uh -huh. then you just take those. Um, it's called a live remote, I think. And that's where you just, you can record or take pictures from your phone. So my phone is in my hand while I'm looking at my feet and I can move around however I want and just snap the picture. Right. That's, that's really convenient. Oh, yeah. I've seen people do that. I just didn't know what app they were using. So that makes sense that it would come with the camera. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, you can check the camera, whatever make you have, and see if they have an app um, available. Mm -hmm. Very cool. What is a common question that you often receive? Um, a common question is, um, I would say, how, what could they do to get as many sales as I do? That is a good question. And how do you answer that? Um, I do get a couple, um, you know, several questions like that throughout the day, different days. So it kind of gets hard to answer each one individually. So I try to make on my Instagram post where I can help people. Um, but, you know, they would have to go back to my post and read them. So sometimes when I don't have time to answer them, I'll just redirect them back to my post. But when I do take the time and, and I'm free and I can answer them, I just tell them that first, number one, is sharing, 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 mm -hmm. because it increases the, um, you know, the algorithm. It helps you with the, with the traffic coming to your, to your posh, um, closet. Mm -hmm. And secondly, um, sometimes I do ask them for their, their closet name so I can go and see their, their closet. And right. kind of it gives me a good idea um, why they're not selling sometimes, not all the time. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I do see why they're, they're not getting as many sales. Um, one could be because they're not sharing the item as the number one thing I look for. Mm -hmm. So if they are shared their items a day ago, two or three days ago, a week ago, then, more, I mean, more probably there's an issue, you know, that they're not sharing their items. Um, so I tell them that, you know, make sure you're sharing your items. You're following a couple people every day. and, and um, you have make sure you have some nice pictures or at least clear pictures where you could see the item clearly right those are very good points and they sound so simple they are they really are but the sad thing is that when we begin we don't know these things you think it's something like ebay or amazon where you just upload your your item and that's it you leave it alone but in reality poshmark is it's like a social platform where you have to work it <laughs> you know right. you have to you have to do put in put work into it for it to to generate income for you right and that's what makes it fun it does it's it's fun as long as you make it fun for others mm -hmm. it can be not their cup of tea and they mm -hmm. say i just don't have time to be sharing my listings <laughs> yeah and and you know to each their own there's different platforms for people like that who don't you know who don't want to be active and i enjoy the the process of you know, somebody asks you a question and you're answering it or now you made a new friend and, you know. Exactly. <laughs> it's fun. Exactly. I, I've made tons of friends on Poshmark and it's mm -hmm. exciting. It's it is exciting. Fun. And it's like women that you probably would never have talked to if you would have seen in person. Exactly. But yet this little app unites you guys in a, a special way. Exactly. What a world we live in, huh? Mm-hmm. So do you happen to know offhand how many items you have for sale? right now I have uh, 134 available listings right now nice so it's it's on the low side mm -hmm. but you're still making a lot of sales oh yeah oh yeah yeah thank god yeah and how often are you adding new listings to your closet you know what I am bad because I know that some people they add daily 
three, three at least or 10, 20 items. I go sometimes days without adding anything. So last night or yesterday, no, I didn't add nothing yesterday. I'd probably say maybe two or three times a week I add something new, whether it's one listing or a couple at the same time, mm -hmm. but not, not every day. I, I don't. I don't do it every day. Very interesting. Um, how do you know which brands to post our list on Poshmark? Um, you know, it's boutique items, so they're not really like designer brands or anything. I kind of go more towards um, trending items if I see that a certain kind, for example, uh, snake print. Mm -hmm. For sure, snake print and, and leopard animal prints are very, very um, popular right now. They're very trendy. Mm -hmm. So on my shoes, it, I could have, um, have a, let's see, I can have some coach uh, high heels that are snake print. And yeah, they probably will sell, but I can also have another shoe that's only worth $20, $30 and snake print and it's very nice looking and it's it's still sell you know mm -hmm. um so it's for me it's not much about what brands although i'm sure that does help you bring in traffic also um i kind of go more of what's trending what kind of looks are trending what kind of colors are trending and how do you know what is trending you know what i do um i'm not a very fashionable person i'm very bad at combining my colors Same here. <laughs> so what i do when I'm, going, <laughs> I'm horrible but when i go in uh when i go into my vendors um to see what items they have you know to the showrooms i ask them what's what's selling for you guys what's popular this season what's what's trending and they'll tell me hey this one's selling very good that one's selling very good and that's that's basically how i kind of go off and also i look through poshmark i look to see other people who sell items that like similar to mine, I kind of see what they carry, what they have, what's working for them, what they're selling and what's not selling for them. I kind of like to com compare in that sense. I think that's health, healthy comparisons because it's only going to help you do better, you know? Um, so that's, that's another thing I do. Look at other people's with, with um, boutique shoes and see what, I, I try not to get the same styles just okay. because, I don't want to be like, well, their item is cheaper now, so they're going to go buy their item. And I don't want to feel like I'm competing in that way with anyone. Right. But I do check out like what kind of, um, what kind of styles they're carrying and, and try to, to learn from that. That makes sense. Are your vendors on Poshmark or do you go to private vendors? No, they're not on Poshmark. I feel like Poshmark prices are very high for wholesale. Um, I have private vendors. Got it. I think that's the best way to go. Yes. That's your yeah. own little honeypot right there. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> I love it. So I just have a few more questions, if you don't mind. Um, no, go ahead. Did, did your husband always support you in selling on Poshmark, or did he have some hesitations about it? You know what? In the beginning, I don't think he noticed it too much because it was maybe one dollar a week, or you know. Um, after when I began with shoes, um, he was supportive, but he he was kind of like not. Um, how could I say it? He would help me with carrying the shoes and taking them to the post office, things like that. But but he was very standoffish, like not. He would just let me do my thing. Um, and now thank god he's very supportive he today actually um i was hoping that i would get back on time for for this for this phone call we were <laughs> out um at different vendors offices i was looking at their stuff and he's very supportive i asked him baby what do you think about this shoe he'd be like no that's ugly <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, what, what about that one and i'm like okay so i i put the shoes on i like to try them on in store so I see what they look like and how they feel He'd be like, oh, yeah, that looks really good. So he's very, um, he's very much, what is that word? Ah, I forgot. The, I'm sorry. I forgot the word. But he's very much engaged with me, with, with my business now. He's, um, he likes to give me his opinions. He helps me package them. That so, is for example, this, yeah, this past weekend, I think I had 25, and um, he'll tell me, baby, come on, we have to pack them. 
and then I'll print the labels. I'll give him the shoe. He builds the box for me. He puts them in there, puts the label on. And then the next day he puts them in the crib or drop them off or he goes for me. It just depends if he's working or not. Uh-huh. Um, so he's been very supportive. He actually, he told me, yeah, we got to go get you that PO box, you know, so you can just be safer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And so he's very supportive. Thank God. He, he really is. He, he's a blessing that, um, you know, the Lord is providing for our family through this means right now. And why not be thankful and, and help out, you know? So I'm very blessed by him. I'm so glad to hear that. It's always helpful to have somebody who you love, who supports you 100%. I, I love that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're just about out of time, but I have one last question for you. Mm-hmm. So what is one action step you would tell someone who's struggling with Poshmark to help them get more sales? I, that's a hard one because it's just not one thing. Um, we can't really, we can't just do one thing and hope it works. It's like, it's a little, it's kind of like a plant, you know, you, you plant the seed. Mm-hmm. You can't just plant it and just hope for it to grow. You have to water it, mm-hmm. right? You have to look after it. You have to make sure that it's getting the sun. And then once it does grow, you can't just leave it there. You have to continue to water it. So the number one thing I would probably say is sharing your own items. I, I, I think I'm always going to go back to that one. First is sharing your own items. And you know what? Um, I've been, I don't know if this is what you do, but there's um, the way that I share, it's by editing my item. Uh-huh. I hit edit, I hit next, and I hit list. That's exactly what I do. Yeah. So yeah. I think that since I've been doing that as well, it just really has boosted everything because it puts you back up on Google search um, and different. And I'm sorry, my, my son just walked in. That's okay. <laughs> Real life. <laughs> right? Um, it puts you back up in, in Google. So people that don't even have Poshmark can find you, you know, just by that. And that's another thing. You have to have keyword um, for your item. So if I have a, 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 a black shoe, I'm not just going to put black shoes. Mm-hmm. New. That's it. I have to put um, new black sneakers, uh, very comfortable, uh, something that's going to, you know, some keywords that are going to, if somebody types in, if I have a, a, a black booty, mm-hmm. you know, somebody's going to go in and type black booties on Google. Mine's going to pop up when I'm doing the edit next list. Um, form of sharing because I'm boosting my item up. So just putting black boot is probably not going to be as beneficial as if I use more words. I hope that makes sense. Yes, that totally makes sense. I spoke about that exact issue in one of my Facebook lives. So I'm so happy that you touched on that because I feel Mm -hmm. I see a lot of listings that are saying things really simple like that. Yeah, Black Mm -hmm. shoes. And that doesn't that doesn't help with the listing as much as if someone were to say exactly what you were saying, black booties, for example, Mm -hmm. good, good advice. And I love your analogy about planting the seed and maintaining it. You have to grow it and take care of it in order for it to flourish and fruit. I love that analogy so much. Yeah. Well, Belle, we are just about out of time, but this has been an amazing conversation that I just want to keep going and going and going because you have, you will have a wealth of knowledge. I love this. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. And also, you know, and, and this is not all, this is not all from me. You know, I've learned a lot from other Poshmark friends, you know, watching and, and, being in groups like like yours, you know, it also has helped because I can see what other postures are doing, mm-hmm. um, what's working for them. Maybe I can try that in my in my Poshmark closet. Mm-hmm. You know, so I've learned a lot from other people as well. So I think we we all learn from someone, and hopefully, we all get to a place where we can actually help others. You know, yes, to be successful as well. That's that's the goal. But I, that's that's my goal to not only be um, make money on Poshmark, but help us others because I know that there's a lot of um, families out there struggling you know there's single moms out there there's people who have husbands maybe who are injured or different 
situations that something like this would really be a blessing for them. And I really want to help them also to, to see that it is possible that normal people can succeed um, with something like Poshmark. It is, it, you could generate a good source of income. But you have to put the work, you know, if you're going to work a nine to five for, for a man or for a, a woman, for another company, and you're going to put all your effort in there, why not your own business? You yes. know, why not why not put it all in, in all your energy into your own Poshmark that's gonna generate it for you? It's it's you and your family. You are speaking my language one hundred percent. Oh my goodness, I could just geek out about everything that you literally just said. <laughs> but we don't have time for that. <laughs> we'll save that for another episode. Right, right. Excited oh. already. Well, Thank you so much for being here, Belle. You have dropped some knowledge bombs, like a microphone drop. I love it so <laughs> much. I have to bring you back on the show. This is amazing. Yeah, that would be fun. As if you don't mind coming back on the show. Oh, not at all. I enjoyed this. Thank you very much. I appreciate you being here. Go out and make some more sales today. And um, I hope that people can come to you and ask you more questions. I know that you're a busy mom but you seem to have all your stuff together mm, praise the lord if it wasn't for him i'd probably lose it wasn't that an amazing conversation i mean if you ever feel like you cannot make sales on poshmark replay this episode again this will give you faith that you can definitely make it work now you can find Bell's Poshmark Closet at Bell's Attic 1. That's B-E-L-S-A-T-T-I-C 1. And I'll have that linked in today's show notes so that you don't have to write anything down and it'll take you directly there. Now remember, this is launch week for the podcast. So I'm doing something fun for my listeners. If you leave a review on iTunes, you'll be entered into a drawing where I'll buy something from your Poshmark closet, but I'm not keeping it for myself. I'll be giving it to another listener who has also left a review on iTunes. So here's the details. To enter, all you have to do is leave an honest review in iTunes, and you can do that right from your phone or your tablet or your computer, wherever you're listening to this podcast. But just be sure to include your Poshmark Closet's name with your review so that I'll know who's actually leaving the review. This giveaway is happening only during launch week, so be sure you check out the show notes at smartermomsonline.com slash three. That's just the number three to get all the details about the giveaway. You can also find a direct link to Belle's Closet if you wanted to check it out on Poshmark. That link will be directly on the show notes as well. I hope you enjoyed today's show. I'll see you back again here next week.